first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. No doubt. Playtime is over. You're back once again with Dr. Alain Bay. First of all, the radio we are on tonight. No doubt about it, and we're going to be going into some deep information, so you know how we do. So just stay with us and be getting ready to um, get into it in a second here. But before I go into the topic for the show tonight, um, I got to address some rumors in which that I've been um, hearing. Um, for example, like um, we had a part, um, like for example, I had a part in the death of my teacher. Um, number one, um, let me explain this very um, good for those in which that have heard this rumor going around spreading this, and I want to go on and nip that shit into the, um, you know, as they say, nip it in the butt. Um, real simply, number one, I was in New York, all right? Um, I was in New York for three days. I had my first lecture. That was 2004, my first lecture in New York. Prince Bay told me to go and do it so I can go on and, um, as they say, uh, if you can make it in New York, you make it anywhere. You know, it was like the Apollo type of thing. But we knew if we, you know, if I can go up there and, um, you know, make it, you know, it'd be good. Prince Bay told me that, um, you know, he'll watch over my family while I was going. Now, one of the things in which that people don't know, for those who might not know who Prince Bay is, Prince Raymond C. Zabel Bay or Prince Hutan Tupac Bay, um, he's the brother on the back of my cover. Um, I was his student for 10 years. All right, he taught me the signs of healing. He taught me Reiki, pranic healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, you know, um, starting out back in 1995. Um, matter of fact, um, he helped link me up with, um, with um, Sister Uma, and them down at um, Cultural Communications when that was popping off real big down in Atlanta, Georgia, off of Cascade Road. Um, you know, up until 98, 99, I moved back to North Carolina and um, opened up, you know, my wife and I opened up our bookstore in 2001, um, Cultural Freedom. And what happened was is that Around 2003, July 2003, he came and stayed with us. During that time period, he had um, a leaky heart valve, in which that um, he already had um, 
two heart attacks at that time. And um, he told me that he changed his name from Ramesses, because Ramesses means to resurrect, to Hutan Tupac Bay, in which that dealt more with um, him wanting to come back and acquire a new body uh, to reincarnate again. And um, some masters want to do that. You know, I, for one, don't necessarily want to do that. You know, now if I'm asked by the council, you know, ancestral council that is necessary to do so, I might. Um, however, it's not my first wish. Um, however, it was from him, as well as also from my other grandmaster, Sanyat Saraswati. He told me the same thing, that, um, you know, he will reincarnate again. So, you know, uh, you know, these brothers, you know, who are masters who taught me information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, comprehension, in the sense of being able to um, decipher and discern um, false information, false profits, you know, from those who just want to make a profit, you know, um, they taught me how to do that. Um, and I'm still getting better and better, you know, as you know, as the days go along. The more I go into self, the more I go into meditation, deeper sciences, practice my Qigong, my Tai Chi, my Reiki, my Pranic healing on a daily basis, um, you know, I'm getting it. Um, and the thing is that they taught me, you know, that I need to be showing others how to get it. Right, and that's what Prince Ramesses Abu Bay did, you know. Um, you know, Prince of Tom Tupac Bay, as he's also referred to as, he taught me how to, um, you know, to teach. You know what I'm saying? In the sense of wanting to go and teach, you know, um, publicly, you know, as, you know, get on the circuit by the Hemet, you know, did an influence, you know, for me. Me and him was um, chilling on the Atlanta Fulton County Library steps. You know, near the steps, and uh, it was myself, another brother, Bobby, and um, brother Nas. You know, from out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, at the time, he was going out to Clark Atlanta University, and Bobby um, was um, going to Clark over the alumni of Clark at the time. And um, you know, he was teaching. You know, on Clark Atlanta University, like I was at Fayetteville State University, alumni. You know, we alumni, so. We end up going back to uh, Adamata and teaching, you know, um, you know, the students. Bobby did the same thing. Um, I did it, and Bobby did it. And um, Bobby is the one who told me that I need to be um, doing this. You know, and Bobby was like, man, there's been smart people who's out here doing, you know, what I was doing, man. You know, be, be a body the predicament. You know, so I said, okay, where well, I go and do it? Now, Prince Bay was relevant um, in that. And I'm the only one who actually got taught by him, you know, over the 10-year period. Out of anybody who's saying anything um, about him, you know what I'm saying, um, that was my teacher, you know what I'm saying, that I love dearly. Two years after he passed, I was still depressed. I was still saddened, you know what I'm saying? And see, that's the thing that these knuckleheads that thought he's saying this nonsense don't understand, understand, and understand. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Prince Bay no longer wanted to be in that weak body, as he told my son. My son now is 19 years old, getting ready to turn 20. And he can tell you that when Prince Bay passed 10 years ago, that Prince Bay told him, prior to him passing, that he was going to go and get him a new body. Now, as soon as I got back from New York, I come through the door. I was gone for three days. Um... I came in, I sat down, Prince Bay told me to sit down. He said, I got something to talk to you about. And so I sat down and he said, I'm tired. You know, he said, I'm getting ready to leave. Now, when he said that, I'm thinking that he was going back to Charlotte because the week before I left to go to New York, he was in Charlotte. So I thought that's what he was talking about. They just came ready to go back to Charlotte. You know, I didn't understand. He was talking about that he was getting ready to leave the flesh, cloak the flesh. All right, so, you know, I said, um, 
well, you can't go. You can't go yet. Because I was like, I didn't know. I didn't think I knew enough information at the time, personally. You know what I'm saying? I was teaching metaphysics and esoteric information and healing from what he taught me. I knew that. But the law aspect, and as far as, um, you know, being a principal chief, you know, I didn't think that I functioned at that level at that time period. I needed more information. So I told him to hold on. I'm going to come right back because I just walked through the door. I didn't even get a chance to say hi to my wife, my son, nothing. So um, they come out the kitchen, greet me. Um, you know, I hug and kiss them. And um, my wife began to tell me that Prince Bay been beating on the drums all day. You know, I'm enjoying himself. And the lady who came in, now this was the strange thing, because there's a lady that came in back in July, August 3, and she had on all white, like an old nursing uniform, you know, old nursing uniform. And this time, my wife said she came back to the store the same day, but this time she had on all black. Now, this was strange. Not in the sense that there was any um, thing done, you know what I'm saying, necessarily negative. It was just more so of a sign, you know, from the way in which that we took it. Because, like I said, at that time, Prince Bay, he didn't want to, um, he was no longer taking his comatin, which was the thing, the blood. He was no longer taking his other prescription. He stopped that himself. Now, of course, you know, um, I even asked him that he want to use, you know, some natural herbs such as cayenne pepper or so forth and so on. He said he didn't want no cayenne pepper. He didn't like cayenne pepper, all right? Um, so these are just things in which that took place because he wanted to happen. He understood the higher sign. So you got to understand that this man was a Rosicrucian. He understood the signs of incarnation. That was that's what he believed. He understood Hinduism. All right. He practiced Hinduism, Krishna, you know, um, you know, um Rama Rama, you know, Krishna. He you know, he studied that information. You know, this is what he was studying. And the man was a master magician. If you came walking through the door and had on certain clothes, he can tell what your thoughts were that morning when you put them on. This is what he did to my wife. Um, he told my wife to breathe, and he inhaled the breath. Took in the breath from her just saying her name, Jamie, right? But that was her name prior to her um, indigenous name correction. And he said, oh, well, you were the twin. You was on the right-hand side. Your brother was on the left-hand side. Um, and he just went in. Now, I didn't tell him, nor did my wife tell Prince Bay that she was a twin. So he knew this just from breathing in the air. From Actually, he said that was just off the letter J itself. That was just off the letter J. So when you're dealing with someone who is this high of consciousness, who can tell what you are thinking, know your intentions and your purpose, you know, the thing in which they, the reason why he came to North Carolina is because he said he did not trust the chiefs there in, North, in, um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Came to North Carolina because I was his oldest student, all right, who still called him my teacher because that's what he was to me, even though later on he told me that he was just a brother who taught me some things. I never felt like that, you know. He was my teacher, and I was very, very hurt, you know, by his passing because he passed in my wife's arms, and I was running around outside trying to get the ambulance, you know, to come and um, help him, you know. So we didn't play any part 
in Prince Bay Pass, and he himself chose the veil to form because, as he told my son, he wanted to come back with a stronger body the next time. All right? So I just wanted confusion, you know, because it is something on which that needs to be spoken of because if anything happens, guess what? Everybody would know what was said. Okay? And the individuals in which that is saying this hasn't even confronted me and don't even know me. So I'm going to have to address it out openly, you know, just in case if some gun clapping pops off. Because that's one thing I do believe in is the constitutional rights of bearing arms, you know. So um, I live in the country, so, you know, we got bears and, you know, um, foxes and coyotes and all types of shit out there. So you need to have protection, you know what I'm saying? So individuals come to me with the nonsense, you know, to a brother that I loved, to the man who taught me and trained me and think that I had something to do with his passing, that's idiotic. And we will have to, you know, get some things understood, overstood, all right? So I want to make that clear. Now, I finish with that. Let me get to that we have our event, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd, this year, next month. We're going to have that popping off. For those who want to learn what Prince Bay taught me and what um, Sanyata Saraswati Grand Master taught me, which is based on healing, in particular, also what Paul Ghost taught me, um, ideology, herbalism, um, Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, pranic healing, acupressure, reflexology, um, numerology, astrology, all of these things, energy modalities, all these sciences will be taught. For three days, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Make sure y'all come and join us. All right? It's $150 for all three days, so that's $50 a day. All right? If you want, you can camp out on the land, bring your tents, your sleeping bags, etc. For those who want the hotels, we have hotel rooms or stay, which is near us, um, less than 10 minutes away. Um, you will have to call there so you can go to the website to book our calendar events and um, go to um, www.dralimelbay.com. All right, so go there, put the calendar events, and see um, the hotels. Um, I think we was able to try to give out the price as much as possible, so forth and so on. But check it out. Go and check. All right, for those that um, want to know more information, you can give us a call at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. And once again, this is our annual event. We've been doing our events for 14 years now. Prince May started us out. Uh, with these events. That's why I had to clear up the confusion because it was too close to when he taught us how to do the dragon dance, okay, which is the Kundalini dance of life, all right? That was in 2003 um, when he began. So actually, it was the 14 years for us doing the mound trips, but when he began to start putting together and solidifying the dance, that was 11 years ago. All right, 2003, and our mountain trip on which we went to uh, Macon, Georgia, there at the um, the Okamoki Mounds, in which that was um, some of the tallest mounds or uh, mound sites, in which that was phenomenal. We actually was doing the dance on top of the mound. Um, after that year, it seems that when you go to these mounds, 
these individuals do not want you to do any rituals. These albions don't want you to do any rituals. And the reason for that is because um, you are invoking your ancestral um, connections, all right? Um, allegedly, they will tell you that the ancestor was buried under the mounds. So if you are doing the dance on top of the mounds, then that seems as if you are invoking um, the spirit, you know, of the mound builders. And that's who we are, the world. Um, we are the Washita. And the word Washita, as we said before, comes from the word Ushita, in which that means um, mystic mothers and fathers. Um, it also means um, Ushita, which is from the ancient comedic word, um, Ueshita, in which that is the eye and the serpent, in which that we would see the top portion of that um uh, what is called the caduceus or the uraeus. The uraeus is the masculine form of the uesheta. And you will see the sun disc with the wings, in which that equals, or is the equivalent of, <clears throat> is the equivalent of um, Malachi, the fourth chapter, the second verse, where it speaks about the sun of righteousness will come with healing in his wings. All right, so we want to make sure that everybody um, is clear on that. So as above is below, as within, so without, we know, understand that as being part of the seven universal principles of Tahuti, known as Hermitri Majestis, which is actually part of what is called law of correspondence. Now, when scientists perform autopsies, um, they have examined the brain tissue on extraordinary individuals such as inventors, scientists, um, spiritual leaders, world religious, and um, basically political figures, and they have done comparison to everyday hardworking so-called ordinary people. And what they have seen is that there's more detail in the brain size, brain wrinkles, um, brain cell size, and actually brain neuron amounts and dendrites connections. They differ. So in other words, the higher the, um, the conscious level, the more differences in the brain structure. All right, so moreover, all of the different levels of consciousness or expressions of the one collective consciousness. The issue is consciousness in its various levels. That's what the issue is. And the reason why you have um, disagreements between people because um, everyone is on a different level of consciousness. Um, we have gone over this before that um, the highest level of consciousness is infinite consciousness in which that can be achieved at one breath a minute. If you was able to do that for 72 minutes, um, you will reach that level, which actually is 100% usage of your brain, all right? So that is the highest level. That is the level in which that we all should be striving towards, this infinite consciousness. That is when you reconnect and download um, the 90% of the brain, which is um, outside, in a sense, of you or that you do not have access to because you have been taught only to be a linear thinking and only use 10% of your brain, all right? Um, so we understand that, you know. Um, of course, we have the different frequencies. You have the um, gamma waves, the beta waves, the alpha waves, the, um, the theta waves, and the delta waves, and the um, delta beta waves, all right? Those are the level of consciousness. Now, when you're dealing with that, you know, the conscious mind, of course, we understand is when the, um, a person is awake, you know, they are alert, concentrated, or focused, you know, um, you know they, they're working their five physical senses, you know. Um, you know, that's for the gamma going into the beta state. When you have the alpha state, you have the relaxation. Um, that's when you go into a trance-like state. You can. Um, you also can go into super learning. Now, the thing about that is that if you lower your breath, um, actually, to um, six breaths a minute. Now, you can actually do that at nine breaths to 7.5 breaths to um, four breaths. Now, in between those three areas, at nine breaths, at 7.5 and four, um, you know, at six breaths, excuse me, you would see that there's a difference as far as you go into one of these different states. Um, at nine, um, you can have real relaxed, focused, concentrated. At 7.5, you can actually begin to start detailing 
and go into a photographic memory state. At Six Breath a Minute, um, you can actually gain access to the Medulla Amagata, uh, where your past lives are stored, all right? Um, so we want to make that clear because um, this is some of the things in which that takes place based on the teachers of C. Freeman L., another teacher of mine while I was living in Atlanta. Um, he told us that there was two areas in the body in which that the soul entered into um, specifically. Um, one is at the top of the head and the other is at the medulla amagata. The medulla amagata is known as the mouth of God. And um, the reason why this is um, made mention as far as the title for tonight's show is about this mystic magi because the mystic magi has learned how to activate and operate that particular um, organ at the back of the head, which is called the medulla amagata. Um, one speculation is that the traditional practices have formalized a method for stimulating that area, but it's also of the endocrine glands to work in a different mode, which has a more direct effect on consciousness. Um, for example, how it will stimulate and release the DMT or penoline from the pineal gland, uh, which we call the pineal body, or, you know, um, we understand that as also the pineal chakra, which is a small endocrine gland, you know, in the vertebrae brain, you know, which is part of the third ventricle, in which that actually deals with the production of serotonin and melatonin, you know, hormones in which that affects the sleep pattern and the rhythm of the body, you know, um, and the cycles of sleep and also seasonal um, functions, you know. So we understand that the concept of that is seen you know, from inky on the walls of the Sumerians, you know, in Mesopotamia, when you see um, in the right hand, you see inky holding a pine cone. Or when you see Shiva, you know, from the Vedic, you know, with a pine cone on top of the head. Or Buddha, you know, when you see Buddha um, with a pine cone on top of the head, you know, or in ancient Kemet, you would see. Um, a pine cone on top of uh, or set um, head, all right, as well as also the Pope, in which that the word Catholic means universal, or the Catholic Church is universal church, in which that they stole the information from the ancient Egyptians known as actually the ancient mystery school, and they perverted the teachings, and now the Pope also walks around with a pine cone on his staff, in which that symbolized that. All right. Um, the Masons also have uh, the signs of the pine cone, in which that sits on top of the caduceus um, emblems, in which that touched the um, Aton, which is the sun disk. Uh, so it is found within all of the mysteries. Now that's of course a French philosopher by the name of Rene Descartes um, believed that the pineal gland is the principal seat of the soul, and of course thought, which is the hoodie of the lower mind, which is actually set to the higher mind, which is Heru, or merely different states of consciousness, which is called Kanzu, all right? Now, each person acts differently because the different parts of the brain are activated. The difference from high to low states of consciousness are what the ancients would refer, refer to as the fall of man or the degenerative of the divine. Now, in order to reach deeper into one's consciousness or conscious self, an individual must lower and deepen one's breath, all right? Or this is based on the breath. And the ancients understood that perfectly, all right? They understood that perfectly. This is why um, the book of Genesis was, talks about your genealogy, your genes. It starts off with that because that's what you are a product of, your mothers and fathers, seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. Those 14 pieces is what is called Osar, in which that Osar was cut up to 14 pieces, in which that one piece was not found, in which that was the phallus simple, in which that symbolizes the erection or resurrection, which is actually talking about your erected body in that regard, and you being part of those um, generations concentrated in human form. Now, we understand the breath has the ability to tap into the different areas of the brain. And this is what the mystics knew, all right, and the knockers of the enchanted realm. They understood that. 
the word Naga symbolizes the Kundalini or serpentine force, the internal power, or Shekhar or Sekhmat, which symbolizes the power of the feminine and ma- of the masculine and the feminine force. I'm talking about within the body itself. Now, in order to resurrect the Kundalini, you must learn how to breathe. In order to make the Kundalini rays from out of its three and a half times call you um, base or at the root chakra, um, you have to learn how to breathe properly. Now, with 18 breaths, that stimulates the reptilian portion of the brain or the brain stem, which is gamma waves, in which that deals with specifically an individual who almost is hyperventilating if you want to know the truth of the matter. They don't have too much control over the emotional state, all right? So, therefore, they're liable to do anything. They're too spontaneous. There's no thought before action, all right? Um, and they don't work too well off of, you know, off of their instincts, all right? And definitely can't tap into intuition. Instinct comes forth from the abdominal brain, all right? Intuition comes forth from the pituitary pineal hypothalamus thalamus glands, which are the spiritual centers in the brain. All right, so the average person breathes 18 breaths a minute, but they breathe entirely too damn fast. And these are the reptilian individuals on which that um, you can see, in which that oftentimes, um, or lack of a better word, you see their eyes change, as which that we are seeing with some of these um, actresses and actors and so forth and so on into a cat-like state that symbolizes someone who's working off the reptilian portion of the brain. And um, these entities from the fourth dimension, first and second overtone level, is attached to their root chakra, which that means that basically everything which they do has some type of lust or even if it's attached to the um, navel, um, some type of lust or greed in which that is involved. So, therefore, this entity manifests, um, as we would say, as some type of reptile in that sense as it attaches to um, the first and second chakra. Now, you have nine breaths a minute on which that give you access to alpha waves, which is the limbic portion of the brain. At 7.5 breaths a minute, um, you know, you're dealing with... Um, you're dealing with um, the cerebral, in which that is, you know, dealing with that portion of the brain. Then at six breaths a minute, you're dealing with the activation of the medulla oblongata. As I was saying, that's the past lives and the photographic memory area. All right, then you have 4.5 breaths a minute, which is dealing with the pituitary gland, in which they're dealing with um, theta waves. And then three breaths a minute, in which that is activation of the pineal gland, which is delta waves, which at that level, no disease can exist in the, in the body, right? And this is very important because that is dealing with magnetic consciousness. So, therefore, if you was able to breathe that breath for 60 minutes um, several times a day or weeks, um, disease will quickly fade away. All right, um, and you will be healed if the thought and the intention prior to going to that meditation state and doing the three breaths um, a minute. Uh, of course, three breaths is 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out. All right, that's three breaths, one minute. Um, each breath is equivalent to one inhalation and one exhalation. All right, um, now you have one breath um, a minute in which that um, all the portions of the brain are activated at this point, all right? And, of course, we know that one brain neuron can contain about 25 billion bits of information, all right? And that's when you tap into what's called delta theta waves, all right, which is um, very similar to um, death, all right? Um, this is what the yogi masters who are trained how to lower their heartbeat to almost being undetected. All right, that's very important. Now, there's also differences between um, a, a predominant left hemisphere thinker and a predominant right hemisphere thinker. All right, the left 
hemisphere of the brain is masculine, male, analytical, linear, verbal, rational. The right female, you know, or is feminine, you know, in which that is intuitive, holistic, sensual, and abstract. Melanin increases the speed of the nerves um, and the brain messages, which are transmitted between the left and right hemisphere of the brain, and all signals transmitted throughout the bodily um, nervous network. Now, for those who want to get more information, you can read um, African Holistic Health by um, Dr. Leila Africa. Now, um, with you know, with practice certain breathing techniques, meditation exercises, alkaline water, um, proper eating of diet, you know, habits. Um, we learn how to use both aspects. You know, they both become synergized, and we um, achieve internal balance between the two. Now, modern science states that um, a brain cell needs more than 10% is more oxygen as any other cell in the body. So that means that you must learn how to breathe into your brain. So as um, the air come up through the nostrils, you must focus inhale breath, which is oxygen, into the brain area and then send that primal chi or key energy throughout the rest of the body. You can move it by simple thought. Remember, energy follows thought. All right? It is reasonable to assume that um, that will be, uh, that means that we'll need ten, not, not just 10 times as much, um, um, you know, uh, in the area. That means we'll need 10 times as much raw Prana or chi or key energy, which is also called Holy Spirit or bioelectrical energy, or etc., um, in the brain. All right, um, the brain is what controls the rest of the aspects of the body. Matter of fact, the brain is and the heart is one of the two first formed organs in the body, as the embryo is forming into the fetus. All right. Now, like I said, we understand that the average person only uses about 10% of their brain, which means the other 90% is unused. However, through various breathing techniques and methods, um, meditation methods and physical exercises, um, such as Qigong or Tai Chi, it is possible to increase the percentage of the brain um, that you use by increasing the amount of Qi or bioelectricity going to your brain as you will activate more brain cells. All right, it is believed that once the unused cells have been activated, they will remain activated. All right, and this is how we was talking about before that some of y'all scared of yourselves because some of y'all don't want to do these breathing techniques and meditation techniques or whatever the case is in order to activate these dormant brain cells and get more dendrites and synapses popping off. And when these portals open up, you know, some of y'all have ancestors in which that have done some horrific things, and you get glimpses of their memories, being that you are a concentration of those memories. You are a concentration of their thoughts in human form. So actually you are a walking thought form. You are a physical thought form, all right? So that, as I be telling my class, not only do you have to deal with your past life incarnations of your soul, you have to deal with... Um, the memories of the in, of each incarnation of the people in which that you come through. That means their fears, their memories, their anger, their frustrations. You know, you have to deal with those things too. All right, because you are made up of their astral template or ethereal template. All right, now. What scientists have also noticed is that melanin in the brain increases from a lower primate as it reaches peaks in Homo sapiens sapien. Now, the thing is, is that it says that brain melanin is concentrated in the region that functions as a gate for all senses, or sensory, motors, emotional, and motivational, or motivational input and output, as well as a region that meditates conscious awareness in general. Now, if you get the book, um, The Kabbalion by the Three Initiates, it says the all is mind and the universe is mental. So man is the universe in miniature form. Um, 
the macro, the microcosm of the macrocosm. So here's you, the soul, the ba, the core, the essence, not the physical body, which is the reflection or the spirit or the excuse me, which is the reflection or the or the shadow. Right, is the supreme source from which all things arise. So even though the physical body is the temple of God, um, we have to realize is that in order to control this temple, you must learn the science of breath, which is science of spirit of ka. You know, um, you also will find that the breath of life is also shu, which is the personification of air within ancient comedic teaching. So we breathe from the moment that we are born. Um, you know, when the doctor spinkers on our behinds um, and we take our first inhalation, you know, is at that point that the soul is activated, all right? When we stop breathing, you know, we take that exhalation, you know, which is that last um, exhale, and we die. The civil, the civil cord, the ethereal cord is cut, and we move on, you know what I'm saying? The average human um, can go, as we know, without food for about 90 day, for about 40 days, Without water for about two weeks, but only about three minutes or so without the um, breath, you know. So thus the spirit or the breath is the most important thing of the three for sustaining life, all right. And this is what the ancients knew. This is why we was referred to as the sun worshippers. The pagans were always sun worshippers because um, we always was in the sun doing various exercises in order to stimulate ourselves, whether it's from dancing or individual light, you know, individual um, breathing techniques or whatever the case is, it was always doing something. And um, also, moreover, the breath controls the lower mind, the lower self or the lower nature, you know, or what is called the negative emotions, you know, such as greed, lust, jealousy, envy, and hatred. You know, so thus, you know, um, a person or group who works on mastering the science of breath is usually quite disciplined and focused, you know, um, Therefore, mastering the signs of breath is necessary for a person um, and a people so that they would not get distracted from their ultimate goal and primary agenda. Otherwise, uh, we would basically be a repeat of the present society, you know, of those of linear thinkers who was relegated down to just the usage of the reptilian portion of the brain, in which that, based on Dr. Leyland's Africa book, um, Africans have 12 centers or melanin centers in the reptilian portion of the brain, and they are activated. The Albion only has two areas um, um, out of the 12 activated, you know, um, in the reptilian portion of the brain. And this is um, even further stagnation, let alone the fact that based on African origin of biological psychiatry, we have, um, you know, Dr. Richard King, who states that 60 to 80% of Europeans have calcified pineal glands, you know, and um, 20 to 35 Asians percent, and 5 to 15% Africans. So we're, we're talking about individuals who cannot raise the Kundalini energy up or otherwise they may suffer the consequences of spontaneous mankind or human combustion. All right, so Yogi's teaches that um, if you learn how to use the left nostril is the passageway for the moon breath, whereas the right nostril is the passageway for the sun breath. Um, this yoga or yoga is called Hatha yoga, and Hatha means literally sun moon. Now, the sun breath is I'm saying to be electrical, positive, masculine, and warm, whereas the moon breath is negative, magnetic, feminine, and cool. Now, the sun breath is said traditionally to be connected to the right trunk of the sympathetic nervous system via a psychic channel called um, is a nadi, you know, and the same is true of the moon breath, all right? It, too, is connected to the left trunk of the sympathetic nervous system via another nadi. Now, when these two nadis, uh, what they are, actually was called the pingala and the ida within the um, Vedic text or Hindu Kush, all right, the Tamil. Now, we call it the sacral nerves within medical, um, the medical establishment, in which that extends from the sacral bone, which is a downward triangular-shaped bone um, attached so right above of your coccyx. Now, these two nerves extend along the spinal column up to the nostrils, and so the pingala to the right nostril and the eater to the left nostril. And this symbolizes the two serpents or the two snakes on the uraeus or caduceus, uh, what is called the Yusheta, 
you know, which is if you get the word washita from, which symbolizes the epitome of Tantra Kriya Yoga, which is actually the illumination. Now, by mastering um, some of the techniques of these um, um, of these particular nagas and and ancient mystics, um, one of the techniques was doing the alternating nostril breath technique, which is called Anuma Valoma, in which that you actually would close off your right nostrils and breathe in uh, for four counts through the left nostril, and then close both nostrils off for a count of 16, and then, um, you know, release the right nostril and ex- exhale through, um, through it for a count of eight, you know. And then, of course, you would change, all right, or alternate. So the count is 4, 16, 8, all right? So um, that is a very good breath technique in order to learn, um, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, um, it's important because at any given time, either the moon breath or the sun breath is dominant, which means that um, we breathe much more strongly from the right nostril or the left. You know, and it changes every two hours when certain ties on a subtler um, plane takes place. Now, if it um, if it does not change every two hours, um, illness may be on the way. All right, that's that's one of the clues. So you, that's why you have to pay attention to your breath. If you dom if your dominant nostril remains the same for a day, illness is certain. Right, and if it remains the same for more than a day, the illness will be serious. Also, if a man and a woman conceive a child, if both are breathing through the right nostril at the moment of conception, the child will surely be a boy. And if the left, it will surely be a um, a girl. But if the man is breathing through one and the woman is breathing through the other, the child may be of either sex. So when you um, took your first breath of air as an infant, um, you began to mix the original as we would say, essence from, from our kidneys with the energy from the air and food you absorb from your mother to create life force energy and you was born. You use your lower abdominal muscles to breathe deeply, which is belly breath, with the um, with and stored um, the life force energy in your lower dantian, which is your um, chakra, all right? Um, there's a good technique for that in which that you can, what is called deep abdominal breathing or what you call dantian breathing. And you would sit um, or stand, you know, or make sure your back is straight. So if you're standing, your feet will have to be shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, pelvis tilted, slightly forward, head just slightly down. So that way the kundalini can raise up the spine if it needs to. But you would breathe in and out through the nose, inhale and visualize a golden ball of light like a small sun growing in your lower um, dantian or navel. And as you exhale, you will visualize the ball intensifying its glow. With each breath, you will see the light growing brighter and brighter. You will do this 36 times, all right? You can also practice this for at least three to five minutes. Ten minutes is ideal throughout the day. Um, And by doing so, what you do is recharge your internal energy. Right, um, because remember we spoke about before there's three areas in your body that you can store energy, or prana or chia key energy. Uh, for- Peace. All right, getting it together. So glad y'all are in the chat room. Um, while I got the line, I just want to say that it was beautiful in Ohio. Matter of fact, we still here. It was really, 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 really beautiful. Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Columbus. Just want to give a shout out to the family over here in Cleveland, Cecilia, <laughs> and also a shout out to the family over there in Columbus. Yeah, that was where it was hot. Peace to the goddamn pool. And to the God Dilo and to the goddess Shamina. We had a great time. We really appreciate y'all. Yama. All right, um, handing it over to Ali. Peace. All right, we back. 
no doubt. Um, so we're going to get right back into it uh, right quick and um, continue going back over the lesson. Appreciate my, my guidance for um, picking up. All right, and so we were talking about um, the uraeus or the uish chapter, which represents the spinal column. Um, actually, it's symbolic to matter and spirit intertwining to produce the manifest world and to create a channel for the sexless um, Shoshuna power, which is um, the hollow area in the spine in which that the Kundalini raise up out of. And then, of course, we have uh, the Pengala and the Ida, as I said, which is symbolic to the super, two serpents and uh, symbolic to electromagnetism or male or female. Um, ultimately, the embodiment of Kundalini, which is serpentine fire, serpent power, the sexual, um, hence vital force or healing power, that's what the Kundalini actually is. There's also the psycho-spiritual energy, the energy of the consciousness, which is thought to reside within the sleeping body. Um, that's within one who does not do this work and is aroused either through spiritual discipline to bring new states of consciousness, including mystical um, illumination, um, the energy then travels up a psychic pathway uh, parallel to the spinal column, which is the shishuna, um, which is called the central axle or crisscross in a helix by the Ida Pingala as it raises the Kotalini energy and activates the chakras in succession. Now, we know that the 7, 9, to 12 chakras um, they based on your evolution and based on where you're at right now, but Revelation speaks about seven um, seals, or seven archangels. Of course, um, the highest archangel is Michael, and that would be somebody to the crown chakra. Next would be Gabriel, somebody to the third eye. Next would be um, um, Azrael, which is to the throat. Then Raphael to the heart. Gimiel to the solar plexus. Samuel to the navel. And Uriel where the word Lucifer comes from, in which that symbolizes the root chakra. All right, that's what that is all talking about. So um, with the Kundalini resurrecting up from the base, which is Uriel, if you go and get the Dictionary of Angels, you can see that Uriel is the God or Lord over hell and Hades, all right, or Shalom, which is one of the seven hells, all right, mentioned within um as we say, within Islam, out of Islam, as well as also within um, Judaism, okay? Now, um, the late um, Bento studied the Kundalini from an engineering perspective, and according to him, um, 7.5 hertz oscillation of the heart muscle rhythm induces mechanical hertz frequency in the brain as in terms creates a um, stimulus equivalent to a current loop all right, um, the nerve endings in that monster route through which the Kundalini right, um, rays. Now, all that is good and dandy in simple forms. Um, start practicing what is called um, microcosmic orbit and macrocosmic orbit techniques in order to create this loop of regeneration within your body, actually. All right, and um, you do that by absorbing vast amounts of chi or prana or key energy into your navel chakra, which is your lower dantian, and then uh, moving it down consciously and pull up your anal muscles and moving it down to your perineum as you do so. And then as you inhale, you will move the energy up the spine to the top of the head. And then as it ball over towards the third eye, you will exhale back down towards the perineum. And you would keep circulating that energy several times, um, you know, and that would help with the regeneration process, rejuvenation, uh, rejuvenating your cells, uh, promoting harmonial balance in your body, you know, so forth and so on. All right, so um, we have the three nadis, which is the Pingala, the Shachuna, the Ida, and they represent it um, as the you know, as we say, the Bible story. When you speak, when you see about Jesus um, in between the two thieves or male factors, um, if you know, I think it's um, Matthew 27 um, chapter and Luke the 23rd chapter. Um, it speaks about the fact of the two um, thieves crucified with him, and he in the center, one on the right and one on the left. 
the one on the left said, if you be the Christ, won't you get yourself down from here? The one on the right said, oh, remember me this day in paradise. All of that is symbolic to the fact, um, to that particular fact, all right? Um, of course, like I said, though, know, we had um, Dr. Richard King in his um, other profound book. is called um, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry. Um, that's where he, um, he speaks about, you know, the concept about pineal gland. But he also said that considers the presence of melanin to be the key agent in the heightening psychic sensitivity in the human organism. So when melanin is able to flow or DMT or penoline, Serotonin, large amounts of uh, serotonin and large amounts of melatonin are able to be excreted from the pineal gland. It heightens, it sensitizes you so you can actually communicate with the ancestors. Now, the pineal gland is rich in neuromelanin, in which that, um, even according to Frank Barr, Dr. Frank Barr, he's a scientist, in which that um, phase time, and he's an information possessing interface molecules, which is phototransducer in which that he basically goes into the pineal gland is strongly related to light and that the body builds in light meters um, in which that he said it responds to light. So the pineal gland responds to light and the light levels by producing melatonin, which determines um, rhythm in the body essentially. You know, and it's known, as we know, uh, in a cold is the third eye. Or as we say within the conscious community, the first side, and is linked, you know, to the crown chakra um, of the head, as well as also to the pituitary gland, which is also connected to the third eye. All right, and um, as well as also to the hypothalamus and the thalamus gland. Now, the pineal gland is a um, reddish gray, you know, in appearance, and it's about the size of a grain of rice, or a kernel of corn, or a shell pea. This is where the term um, pea brain comes from which means about, what, five to eight um, millimeters in diameter, you know, and it's located um, right above the third ventricle, you know. Um, so when it's engulfed with blood, however, it can actually swell up to about the size of a dime. Um, it used to actually blow up to the um, size of a silver dollar originally, and this is why on the um, walls you can see the ancient Egyptians with a pine cone or what looks like the pineal gland sitting on top of the head because actually at one time, um, based on all reports, the pineal gland actually sat more closer up towards the top of the head area. It did not sit as it does now in the center of the brain. It used to sit further up towards the top, um, right underneath um, the area which you know, when you were born up to the age of seven, is that soft spot in your head and you used to sit right there, all right? Um, and then, of course, after the age of seven, you know, you begin to get hard-headed, you know, and um, that's where the term hard-headed comes from, all right, because at the time of seven, you begin to start developing your own personality, all right? So the pineal gland is the actual eye, and that eye has 144,000 magnetic crystal or quartz diamond sand like particles on it. All right? That's what people don't tell you. And that's where the term 144,000 comes from. And they've actually um, blown up um, um, the pineal gland, you know, on a um, micrograph, you know, um, and magnified. And you can actually see these sand like particles. All right? And so the pineal gland is a midline structure. And it's actually shaped like the pine, um, pine cone. And it looks like the, actually the penile gland, which is the gland's head of the penis, all right? And it's often seen um, in x-rays, you know. Like I said, to those individuals who have cuts for pineal glands, it can actually be picked up, all right? Um, now, we've gone over this before in which that one of the tones in which that helps with the detoxification of the pineal gland is the tho sound. Tho. T H O H. So the tho sound is um, real powerful in order to decalcify the pineal gland. Um, of course, you have the I sound for the crown, the 
E sound for the third eye, the Y sound for the Madonna Magata. So those are the three sounds in which that resonate within the head. So I and of course E and Y. So those three sounds, which are the vowels, um, if you notice in the ancient scripts of um, whether it's Hebrew. Seretic, Arabic, Aramaic, Amharic, um, Metuneta, there was no vowel was used because as you enter within a person's auric field, which is about three feet, um, you can actually pick up, um, if you were sensitive enough, as we once were, um, how the individual were feeling and actually we use the vowels as a pitch change, which is a soul urge um, for healing. And you would use the vowels um, in which that was necessary in between the consonants. And the word consonants, it stems from the word constant. And the word constant by Webster Dictionary um, definition means that which remains the same. So it means that um, the vowels are the pitches or modes or patterns or schemes in which that produces a change or frequency within the word itself, all right? So we have to understand that, and this is the reason why it wasn't used. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we also say the pineal gland converts a uh, neuronal signal into a endocrine gland um, output. It is located close to um, the center of the human brain, total of 20 um, glands, from human subjects ranging in age 15 to 68 was studied. And this is what it says. It says micro crystals were found in every gland in quantities ranging from 100 to 300 crystals per cubic millimeter of gland. All right? Now, um, it goes further and says that a minute crystals of magnetite in the human brain has been found and has suggested a mechanism or a coupling of microwaves radiation to them. Um, in other words, they were able to test it, and they found out that the pineal gland reflects the light of the outer sun received by our antennas, which comes through the hair and through our skin, which, i.e., melanin, sending the photons um, to the inner sun um, which is inside the pineal gland, being that the pineal is the, um, the seat of the soul. And the word soul, S-O-U-L, is derived from the Latin one, S-O-L, which um, is um, a form of also, um or ra, and is distributed to the other melanin centers, um, acting as a step-down transformer. The pineal gland sends that electromagnetic energy to the pituitary gland, from there to the pituitary gland to the pineal thyroid, and then from the thyroid to the thymus, and from the thymus to the pancreas and spleen, and then to the adrenal glands, to the prostate within the man, testes, and uterus and ovaries within the woman. These become your so-called, you know, um, seven centers or seven chakras or seven seals or opening up the seven seals, as we would say. All right, if you go to uh, Revelation, the fourth chapter, it speaks about um, um, the front of the throne was like, a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne was four living creatures, and they was and their eyes was covered in front and in back. Um, the four creatures is nothing more than the pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, and the thalamus gland. Those are the four creatures that he's talking about. And the crystal um, city or glass is talking about um, really when the pineal when the um, pineal gland. Um, is hit by the Kundalini energy, and it comes up through the 33 vertebrates at the back of the spine. It hits the pineal gland, in which that causes the pineal gland to solidify, and those sand-like particles becomes like a crystal, um, a diamond, in which that is called the crystal city or crystal palace. All right, um, if you go to uh, Revelation 21st chapter, it speaks about the fact that it says, um, having the glory of God and her light, was like unto, now who is her? Her is talking about the Kundalini. And her light was like unto stones um, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. 
where it goes further on that in the building of the wall of Jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear um, glass. So he keeps talking about this crystal city, you know, and um, that's talking about right there within the brain. This is why it says the kingdom of God is within you. Um, you know, when Jesus was asked that question in Luke seventeen twenty one. You know, neither look here nor there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's the kingdom that they're talking about. It's right there in the third ventricle. All right? So according to Taoism, all right, the center of the brain um, between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland is the crystal palace. Um, um, it's between the old brain at the back and the new brain at the front of the head, um, between the left and the right hemisphere, sitting between the two wings of the mysterious um, ventricles. All right, that's where you get um, the sun disc with the wings, two wings stretching from it, all right, symbolic to the two large cerebrums, and hence you get the word cherubim within uh, the Hebrew in which that are two angels in which that they often show you, the two angels in which that have flaming swords at the gate of, um, of um, at the gate of the Garden of Eden, in which they had not to allow Adam and Eve and the ancestors back into. And then you also have um, you also have um, the same thing with uh, on the Ark of the Covenant, the two angels, uh, you know, uh, facing towards each other and their wings um, coming towards one another. Then you also have the same thing when Jesus was getting out um, the sepulchre um, and he raised himself three days and three nights afterwards uh, as he resurrected. There was two angels um, at the sepulchre when Mary Magdalene came in order to tell her the same thing. All of these two symbolizes the cerebral, um, the two large cerebral, all right, which is at the interior end of the um, cerebellum, all right. Um, the cerebellum is one of the oldest features of the brain involving um your coordination, your muscular activity in the body. It is said that when the pineal gland is active, it becomes illuminated like a thousand suns, which means it becomes um, um, illuminated like um, a ton, in which that during the 18th dynasty, you had Nefertiti, her children, you know, um, her daughters, as well as the son, Tutankhamen, uh, you know, um, and father, Amenhotep IV, who uh, became known as Akhenaten, or Akhenaten. Um, you would see them um, with their hands raised and the sun rays of Aten um, coming down with, um, with, at the end of the rays, hands and blessings, you know, um, as, or bliss, as we would say, not blessings, because that symbolizes the blessed sacrifice, but let's say bliss, all right, in which that um, the sense of white light flowing within and without maybe when the um, pineal gland is highly activated, in which that ends up producing DMT, which is a type of chemistry um, during the height of the peak. And DMT is also naturally produced in small quantities in the human brain and has um, been hypothesized that DMT or penolene is produced in the pineal gland in the brain. Um, and we know that for a fact now, and that the pineal gland appears in the development of the human fetus around 49 days after conception. All right, and this is where the soul becomes embedded at, is in the pineal gland. Um, if you want to look for an actual place of the soul, actually the soul resonates throughout your whole body in the form of breath, the insulation and exhalation, but the abode would be that of the pineal gland. So when the crystal chamber is lit, transcendental visions occur. Transcendental visions probably occur due to the increased kutalini uh, flow, raising uh, what we call dopamines, all right, and all kinds of changes happen in the retinas and the optical lobes, you know, in which it increases ATP production, acting as a neurotransmitter, all right, and um, increased blood flow in the brain and increases uh, your metabolism. The end result being that one has an increase in visual um, sight in the visions, in the lights, seeing the auras, and vivid dreams, lucid dreams in particular, okay? Now, 
Um, also, according to um, Grandmaster Sonia Sir Swati, if you get his book, Jewel and the Lotus, on the Tantra Path to Higher Consciousness, um, he states that around the pineal gland are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Now, of course, pair means two, so 12 times two is 24. Um, there's no coincidence that um, we have Jesus and his 12 disciples at the Last Supper. We have King Arthur and his 12 knights at the, um, at the round table. But then you also have Rudolf Steiner, who was the founder of the Anthroposophical Society, who was a, a former member of Rose Cushion and former member of the Anthroposophical Society, but no matter of Vasky. He's one of, he was one of the uh, um, head students. But he states that the zodiacal nature is microcosmically reflected in the human being in many ways. The 12 constellations seen under the dome of the filaments are reflected under the dome of the human being's skull. All right, this is what he says, and he goes on, that there's 12 principal nerves that originates in the head, all right? And he goes on, that nerves and nervous system, that the peripheral nerves system, nervous system is made up of three pairs, namely the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, and parts of the um, what we call involuntary nervous system that is outside the, um, outside the brain and um, spinal cords. Um, these three are the trinity above the zodiac, and when they are um, enlightened with the flow of Kundalini, um, you are no longer subjugated to just the, to just the influences of the zodiac. So hence, that's when karma ends, is when you are illuminated to that level. The highest of these three are the cranial nerves, of which there are 12 pairs right now. As we said, the cranial nerve sits around the pineal gland, um, in the circle, and the pineal gland is the master endocrine gland and sits in the center of the brain, all right? So you have the olfactory, um, the optic nerve, the um motor nerve, the tricleral nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the adensinian nerve, the facial nerve, the vesicobluter, um, colloidal nerve, um, and the, the glossophygenial nerve, the vargus nerve, the accessory nerve, the hypo glossial nerve. Those are the 12 pair cranial nerves, all right, in which that is the same as, you know, as we said, um, whether it's the 12 disciples, whether it's the 12 zodiac signs, whether it's the 12 tribes of Israel, whether it's the 12 um, tribes of um, Ishmael, you know, all of that is talking about the same thing. And if you go to um, Revelation, the fourth chapter, it says, and around the throne was four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiments, and they had on their um, heads crowns of gold. This is talking about that when the Kundalini comes up, um, produce a whitish, yellowish um, glow, that particular area of the brain. All right. All right. All right, all right. Um. March the 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd. You definitely want to be at Kelly, North Carolina. We're going to be adding on. We're so excited. It's going to be a wonderful and amazing and beautiful thing. All of the adjectives. <laughs> Get the last one up. Um, let me see. I'm just, I'm just so happy that we had a great time. And even at the beginning of this segment, um, Eileen went in, you know, speaking the truth. So right, I think that was honorable. It was beautiful, and it was well needed. Um, but now I'll turn it over to you, God. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. All right. Brother L, you with me? Uh, Islam, boy. Islam, boy. All right, we're getting ready to go to the phone lines. Let's see what's going on here. We have area code 614. Area code 614, you're on the line. Hey, how you doing tonight? Great. Well. Peace. Okay, thanks for the information share. That was real tight for right now. And it um it kinda sequenced with something that I'm doing personally for myself right now, which is um studying the Anakian magic. And when you were right. speaking about the different parts of you know, the brain and things of this sort, um a thought came to me that maybe you can help me locate some charts I'm looking for. Yes. I'm looking for charts that um, uh, describes the uh, different points within the spinal cord as well as charts for um, 
the the Kundalini the Kundalini rising. I actually seen Bobby Hemet present one in a some videos some time back, and I'm just trying to get a hold to them as well as uh, the uh, chart of the Tree of Life, you know, on the dark side. So I don't know if maybe you have some resources or oh, yeah, maybe those, um, these are charts that you that you have. That you I, have, have, have same, um, I have those same um, charts that um, Brother Bobby did. And um, some more. So um, yeah, just send us your email address, and we can get them um, out to you. Okay, that's what's up. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, take it easy. All right, we're gonna go to the next call. We have every code eight zero four. Every code eight zero four. You on the line? Face, what's going on? Face, face, face. I I just wanted to just um. Share my experience with meditation, and um, right. how I how I get my life flowing is with um like a, a a vibration, you know, with the it's it's it has the own minute, but it's also like a a vibration which will cause kind of like my teeth to chatter, you know what I mean? And I would first mm-hmm. I would just peep out my eyes and I would see like a a broken light, like in, you know the, the the yellow light in the street. When you're driving, you know what I mean? I would see that first. And then when that light turns solid, it's a solid yellow line. You know what I mean? It's like I, I can see it around the rim of my nose or whatever. And once it gets solid, that's when the ohm becomes steady, where you're controlling your breath, but at the same time, that is not your breath. So you can understand what I'm saying. Yes, I understand exactly what you're saying out yeah, well, see, when yeah. you're dealing with the breath, that's what we were saying earlier, is that you're dealing actually with the aspect of the soul, um, in which that is very important for us to realize because, um, you know, when the soul incarnates in the physical body or is incarcerated, as we would say, in the physical body, as the Nazis refer to it as, or influenced by a prism of light or a prison of light, um, we find that the soul um, actually records your experiences or what is called your breath. Um, that right. records your experiences, and so therefore, um, as you begin to start having no experiences, and you go into the realm of what is called nirvana, uh, which is the realm uh-huh. of nothingness um, or noon, you know, and you just are, you know, or is, as they right. say, um, that is definitely what takes place. Is that you begin to um, not even identifying any longer with the physical body, you are nothing more than a breath at that point. Which is so right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's 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 very. I just wanted to, you know to, to share that. And like, you don't have to sit in a squatting position. You know what I mean. You can sit on the bench as long as your your spine is straight. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. Like you were saying with the with the slight tilt. You know what I mean. That's how it goes down. You know what I mean. And you can go into that trance for hours. You know, as long as you have the time to. You know what I mean. That that's just what I wanted to wanted to share with the vibration, you know what I mean? Adding the vibration to your um um or you know what I mean? Where it's the actual chatter and it's a you know, you feel yourself uh you feel your face shaking, you feel your nose, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Because um the gla- the um your your nervous system is being um um uh, increased with that kundalini, you know, and so yes, yes you won't you're going to start feeling all types of um, movements in the body because, um, matter of fact, I mean, symptoms of the Kundalini is spasms. You know, whether it's muscle or nerves, you're going to feel movement because or even um, crawling on the skin. Those are byproducts of the raising of the Kundalini, the symptoms of the Kundalini. Uh-huh. So you're going to feel different symptoms. Um, that was referred to in the, um, in the Book of Revelations as the seven plagues you know, as they refer to it as, which is upon the awakening of each of the chakras or the raising of the kundalini through each of those conscious centers or melanin centers, you will experience uh-huh. um, a, experience as those areas are being cleansed and those ethereal strands, strands or threads are being burned. Right, okay. That's peace. That's peace. I appreciate that, brother. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, that's all I wanted to share, all right? All right. Peace. Peace, Peace. Peace. All right, we have 
have area code 804. Area code 804, you on the line. Uh, peace, Brother Alain. Peace. Um, uh, this is Brother Kufu Usil from uh, VA, right? Peace. And, uh, yes. Uh, look, I just want to share, right, you've been talking about the uh, uh, voluntary system and uh, the involuntary system, right, and the nervous system, right? Right. Guess, guess what the number one detox is? The nerves. Herbs, you said herbs. Uh huh. Okay. I'm gonna uh, give you some homework to do. Uh, All right. You familiar? Uh, you familiar with the UN, right? Urea. Uh, okay. Urea. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Look, you know the calcium deposits that uh uh we collect at the bottom. Right. We don't supposed to hide it in our units. That's the residue from the from the heavy and uh, light metals and uh, other particulates. Right, right, exactly. And, and and see, since I've been playing with these batteries, and I got familiar with my urine, right? Mm-hmm. Uh yes, batteries is the number one detoxer, and the cheaper the batteries, the better. Mm. Yes, yes. Now, how, uh, so how do you utilize it? Uh, 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 well, uh, this how you uh, this what you can do. You go to Radio your shack, get your uh, uh, your alligator clips, your double headed alligator clips. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. And, yes, and, and and go to the hardware and get you some of that nice flat copper. Okay. And, and, uh, Yes, and see right now, I'm playing with all kind of metals. I'm playing with thick aluminum because I'm, you know, at a at a uh, fabricator shop. See what I'm saying? So, right. so uh, I'm making I'm making great success that you know the white guy giving me what I want. And but guess what? I'm shooting the signals through 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 uh, granite. Mm. Now. Now, if you look at the composition of granite, it has all the electrical properties in it that your electrical need. Mm-hmm. And I don't learn so much about the electrical man. That that is the big, the, that's the very uh, 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 number one of turning into that ship. You got to be electrical. Your uh, 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 energy channel uh, must not have no metals in it. See, see, they turn us from batteries into a magnet. And see the two. And see, when we outside, we put a charge to the metals from our our central nervous system and the crown of our head. And if you look at the people's sickness, what they have, the aneurysms, strokes, and, you know, all all these brain issues and leaky gut syndrome, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and diabetes, you know, they get the energy channel all clogged up. But I, 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 I put to the challenge, anybody who listens, catch your urine and put it in a jar. Don't catch the first screen, catch the middle to the end. And that's and that's nurse that you want put it somewhere. Come back about three weeks. If you got calcium or uh, a uh, build up at the bottom, you got metals. That's your sickness. That's that's word. We release the energy from our feet. Now, now right. see they got everybody feet insulated wearing these fucking tennis. Mm-hmm. And that. And that energy got to be released. Like we eat, we charge, and we go to the bathroom, we discharge. That's true. Mm-hmm. You know, and and see that energy got to be released. And where you think it really get released through our our, our paws that make us uh, 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 15 feet uh, uh, high up to the sky and about six, seven feet wide. And we come in contact with the metals. We we put charge on them, and and see we don't know what to do with them 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 metals out there, you know. Cause we used to get our metals from the soil, 
you know, the veggies, right? Right, right. And, right, and, 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 and the way we built so electrical, you know, when we get these far metals in us, we, you know, we, we like pack wrecks. We put it here, there, and wherever we put it at, that where Hunter said, you know, we wonder why our legs swelling. But these stuff, you know, they're killing our blood cells, making them putrefy and bust open in the bloodstream. You know, hmm. that's the problem with a lot of people. They they got dead blood cells. <laughs> and, you know, they need to dig them a fucking hole in the ground, take the shoes off and, and get in it, you know, put the MP3 in and get grounded, man. If you look at how these white folk build their builders, they go deep just like the fucking pyramids. You know, they got to take them shoes off, man. But catch your you one, if you got calcium build up, that's, how, that's your signal. But um, batteries, it's the sign to our immortality. Hmm. And we're supposed to be eating salt and plenty of fat. You know, because you know, you know when potassium and uh, sodium come together, they have a baby called Isaac. Be ready to live forever. And see, my higher, my higher turned into its original. I have great, and it's, it's it's turning back to its original. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but but. But get your copper, get your copper, let that be your conductor. See what I'm saying? You can just put your feet on it, on the copper, and, and, and you know, your batteries, you got your positive and your negative. That's like the earth. South Pole, North Pole is a, is a, a positive and negative. Now, the same thing I'm doing is what they're doing with the hop. All they're doing is they don't made their batteries. The batteries that live forever, you know, your South batteries, and, you know, the same signs came from all the Abu Wash, you know, not for the geezer. You know, they're playing with these exotic batteries, and, and they're shooting signals up in the atmosphere, you know, where there's where is a lot of uh, electrical activity, you know, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They think they do, you know. Got got the earth wobbling and, and and we all for sucking here two suckings there you know just messing time all up and recognizing the frequencies and everything but long as we keep the metals on us we'll have our psyche about us but you must have your energy channel or uh, uh, clear of the metals and and uh, Robert Hemet need to lay on some granite. He need to. He need to get up. He need to go to Oswan to get some of that good grind, and he can get it free even from Abu Wash. That not for the geezer. That was our house, brother, right? Well, shoot, one of the largest places right there in Atlanta um, is Stone Mountain, um, Georgia. That's made out of granite. Um, granite. Okay. Well, look, he need to get him some granite. You know. You know. Well, uh, 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 these granite spots here in, in, in Virginia, I didn't go up to Ashland, you know, but they got granite from everywhere, but some bitch ain't got no granite from uh, 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 Oswald. See, see what I'm playing with now? It's pretty nice, but I want the quartz granite. You know, I ain't got some quartz marble, but I want the quartz granite. And, and guess what? Limestone, get it. And shoot them signals through it, like I said. Right. And see, limestone got all the uh, what uh, radioactive activity that could add on to the electric, you know, like like mm-hmm. uh, electrolysis. Now, if you look at the word electrolysis, that's the mother of all them gases, them hydrogen. It, it comes out of electrolysis. We must get electrical. Right. You know, yes, yes. That's our psyche about us. And um, I'm very psychic. And see, I'm playing with metals, and I'm shooting these signals, and I know how to shoot them. 
see, see, what they shooting with the hop, what they shooting out of billion, uh, 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 amperage, miller amperage and, and electrolysis. And see, they shooting these signals through, through these poles. Yes. Right. You know, and, you know, they're shooting it on on the lower atmosphere bubble. Them clouds might can bust that stuff, you know? Right. But, yes, it's, uh, uh, that's where we get our microwave oven from. And, see, another thing, you got to learn how to weaponize these, these, these fucking microwave ovens because that's, that's one of the residues. Yes, I know how to weaponize them. You know, I ain't ever nobody to try to bust up in here. Because all I got to do is hook some wire up. You know, have it hooked up to a battery. They they can just touch the uh, 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 conductor. The ass going to blow from the inside out. And, and see, that's all the hop is. It's a, it's a, it's a heater. Because, see, you can put some metal, some galvanized steel, any kind of metal, aluminum, Put it in your gut, it's going to warm up. You know, when you put it on the positive, it's going to warm right. up. You know, right. yeah. But uh, Bob and him need to put some metal in his in his central nervous system, and he can just sit his, sit his feet on some granite, you know. And he need to get outside, put his feet in that dirt, dig it knee high, put it in that dirt, you know. So he can get his blood cells to open and close. You know how you put a wash rag in the water and you bring it yeah. out and you squeeze it? See, mm-hmm. they expand and, and it's right. You know? And uh, them batteries, it's like, it's like everything we need for our electrical. And when you take them same signals and shoot them to, to, to granite in its original composition, Oh, man, I don't know what it's like to be tired and sluggish, but I can tell you a million things what it done, done for me. Now, it, well, uh, come on, I know. Tell, tell the audience. Uh, okay, okay. Man, look, look. Uh, 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 a guy, I knew it all before. A guy got shot three times, right? And uh, he said it took the pain, uh, you know, away uh, off the bat. Uh, Cause he got, he caught one of the bullets in his hand. You know, you don't have people had their organs uh, uh, um, messed up from from having these metals and 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 the nutrition and all that other thing. Not drinking water, you know, they just falling apart. You know, but this thing, these batteries would do the job. Right. But I got to learn how to be uh, computer savvy. So I can get with you on that, but uh, that's 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 one of the things we got so quick is the knowledge of the batteries. That's our immortality. You got to know how to shoot them signals. It's the right. same thing they do doing with hop. They shooting the signals, you right. know. That's right. And and and, 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 and yes, yeah. and, and see nine batteries. Now batteries is the is the is, is the closest we're gonna get to these to our brain signals. Our brain signals is is, is around the area of four point four and a half. Somewhere in that four four and a quarter, four four and a half, you know. But but see, but when you get your upper and lower uh uh Egypt connected but you must have a good spinal, like you were saying, because that's where all the traffic go. See, our gut got to be on the same frequency as our brain. Right. And see, and you know that other little piece of brain behind our ear, what is on the left-hand side? Mm-hmm. And see, you got to have good, you got to have good cells, because that part of your brain stay in chaos. <laughs> Right, you want the temple lobes. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I tell them I'm in the back, in the back of your ear. Oh, that the back piece, ear. Yeah, mm-hmm. that little piece of brain back there. See, that, that piece of the brain stay in chaos. So mm-hmm. so every cell in our body have to pause and get to that to put it back. Now, just imagine if you don't have good, strong cells, 
you know, your shells can't pause like that and handle that piece out of the brain. That's why people get sick again. I believe that's where all your brain problems come from. It's short circuit. Because your brains, man, I mean, your uh, uh, blood cells, they got to be at its pinnacle. At its pinnacle. Because uh, uh, if they can't if they can't service and nurse that little piece of brain behind our ear, do the knowledge to it. It 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 go it, it's chaotic. It's nothing but chaos back there. Right. But, but 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 we have to use all our energy about us to keep that in control. Now if you can't keep that control, that what happens to bro, uh, brother Bobby Hemmings. Now I know a, I know a young boy. He caught a stroke. He blind and and he can't hear in one ear. So uh, I had to stop seeing him because uh, you know he he was putting mileage on me, you know. And uh, 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 the the young girl I had to take my blood pressure, right? So so uh, when she took her blood uh, took my blood pressure, she she got startled, right? And I said, what what? And she said, your blood pressure is one hundred over seven. And I said, what's that? She said, that's the blood pressure of a, a teenager. Man, I'm 50, mind you. I'm 50 years old. And my eyes, my eyes look just like a little baby. They're white. I had a brother tell me, look, I had a brother tell me, right? He said, brother, man, whatever you're doing, you keep on doing it. Your eyes look great. And see, and my, yes, go ahead. Now, I'll be saying, that's good, that's good. Continue on, bro. Yeah, but we gotta learn how to use them battles. We gotta, we gotta get back to the basics. And see, mm-hmm. and see, you know, hey, look, you know about that man we're trying to save in Alabama, right? Right. It, yeah, they, they see that's all they do. They uh, destroying it. But I want to ask you a quick question. I'm gonna book up this time because I, I I don't put the cuffs on you. Look, um, what year did the cameras was uh, 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 came out in this country? About 1840, do you really know? Right. Right. Well, um, yeah, around 1820, about the 1820s to 30s, yeah, somewhere around that okay. time. That's what okay. Well, that, that was a camera in which that um, they're seeing, in which that did, um, you know, like the photography of what we now see of individuals like um, Abraham Lincoln. You know, mm-hmm. um, during that time. Okay. But there were also improved cameras even before then. But they don't mm-hmm. really talk about. <laughs> okay. Well, uh-huh. look, let me tell you. Well, let me tell you what I found real quick, right? And I believe I believe Google took it down, right? Uh, uh, I, I found it on YouTube called Visions from the Past, right? When the camera technology first came out, somebody mm-hmm. took some pictures of these niggas, right? Mm-hmm. See the people. You know, you know, and everybody else listening, right? But I saw the evidence with my poor eyes. And see, and see, that's like my parents and, and their parents, their lips was thin and their nose, you know, was sharp, high cheekbone. But us, that's like me and, and my siblings, we got big lips and wide nose. Where well, theirs was sharp and high cheekbone. I just don't understand it. And I be looking at our features. We so strange. We so strange people. Very ghostly, very ghostly, and see, and you know another thing, but I mean, uh, 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 it's it's some blacks out there with the power, right? They don't know, but they got to learn it, and they got to know when. They be invisible. It might be for a sucking or a miller sucking, but they be invisible, and they're gonna grow, and they're gonna grow. That's like that's like the evil uh, evil spirits. I'm telling you some real stuff, because when I was in Egypt, right, I was in the uh, Winter Palace, and I had to walk through uh, a, a guard, an armed guard, uh, 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 um, armed guard garage. And when I got inside, I walked around, had me a nice time walking around. But at the end, when the white Turks, whatever, they approach me, like, what the hell are you doing in here, in so many words. It was historical. And I had I, I had my head wrapped, and I had on a jelly bill, man. And when I when I went back went back over across, and I told the brothers, they bust out laughing to the ground, man. Cause niggas can't go in there. 
They can't go in an open establishment. They got, if they can't, they, they must look very Western, though. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what happened, man. I went up in the Winter Palace, man. I walked through. So I, I wonder, was I invisible? There's no way in the world I'm supposed to walk across that uh, uh, arm guard garage, man. You know, them boys, they wear uh, white, right? I was over there for nine months, came back for six weeks, and went back. When I came back, I couldn't keep my head right. I had to go back. But, look, when I saw Abu Wash, this a place you ain't got, you ain't got to pay them chronicles and they dying. You ain't got to pay them one dime. You put off the highway and, and, and come right on up through that. You going to be seeing the columns before you get there. And, and that's the grand that I won't put my hands on. Uh, it's a white lady did a documentary of the uh, Abu Wash, where you got the pyramid with no top. It's about ten stories deep, and that's where the um, pin pyramid is right there in your in your sight. But you can see all the pyramids from from the north, from the from from Abu Wash. And I mm-hmm. saw this document, but see and see they done did something to uh, her daddy. I think the mother, her daddy, and and, and she ain't hiding or something. Um, I forgot the name of, of the documentary, but she down with the boy who wrote the book, The Black Genesis. Right. See, they had, they had, while well, they telling these, 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 these stinking Zionists, these same Zionists of American following, not all of them, both have, have. And, and see, they telling these Zionists, look, cut your lives out. Robert Bouvard did a good book, The, the Black Genesis. You know, but these, these white boys being persecuted, you know. As, as, as soon as niggas get these people, their religions back, and the white people, get that, get that stuff back, man. Right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Got to get it mm-hmm. back, man, so we can get back to our yeah. sexuality and our, uh, what the other one, our sexuality and spirituality. That's what we're being deprived of. And look, and when you see Karnak and... and I, I know you've been down down South America and all through that, but to pull up on Karnak, that'll blow your mind. But it ain't right. deeper than uh, Abu Wash. It ain't deeper than Abu Wash. <laughs> Abu Wash is my is my pinnacle. You know, it's my mm-hmm. pinnacle. Yes. Okay. But okay. but but the babies must see each. Other. Without that, we be really blind. But that's enough evidence where. Uh, uh, a Negro or more or somebody to carry the ass there and see the evidence. They couldn't destroy it. Right. You know, but that's, man, we need to get back to the basics, man. But uh, I'm I'm a student, man. You know, I, I got severe dyslexic. But since I've been fooling with these batteries and I'm shooting the same signals through the water, you know, it, I'm, I'm full of energy, you know, and I, I, you know, I be treating my dog with it. He's like ten years old now, and, and you know, he think he's still a child. Well, I got but, you. My my wife um, worked with that too. She um, used to take the alligator um, clips and attach um, silver um, to the nine volt battery and actually make um, you know, silver you know, colonial silver. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, we know mm. what you're talking about, you know, in the way in order to do it. You definitely want to check into that. Uh, mm, in fact, I'm my wife, yeah. Uh, she got your phone number. She probably, yeah, she's probably going to end up giving you a call here real soon in order to get more detail and everything. Um, hold on, Doc. Hey, hey, um, hey. A minute. Hey, look, hold you know on. another thing? Yeah. The, the, the batteries, you can put the batteries in your neighbor core, please. About three, that shoot them low signals. That 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 half of the half of the nine or uh, or uh, 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 amperage power that you be shooting. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Our neighbor core, we must know about it. That used to be our hookup back in the day. And see, I'm, right. I'm getting ready to build me a sarcophagus and shoot these signals through them. Okay. That's what we got to get back to. Wonderful. It's, it's the it's the it's the it's the it's the, it's the, it's the minerals in the in the original composition. It got all the electrical nutrients. You can just sit your foot on it. When it's when it's a hundred degrees outside, oh, the, the electricity everywhere. Ooh, 
I can't wait to get hot. But I just got familiar with this in flower work. I can't wait to get hot. But I saw some spider webs drip from the sky. I don't know if I asked you about this. Yeah. Some spider webs. People mm-hmm. that's walking yeah. through it. But I just saw right. it one time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it said that um, the bacterial spore, which that is coming from out the chemtrails, um, falls like spider webs, in which that um, ends up giving a person um, a disease called Mangellin. Which yeah, that, Mogalis, um, Mogalis, right, exactly. Right, 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 right. So well, I know exactly what you're talking about because I have that information in my book, The First World Order. Um, I remember when you first brought that up on the show, um, like over a year, actually almost two years ago you brought that up, and um, you made mention of it. Mm-hmm, I remember. But 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 the only thing I believe that a combat that to the to the to the clinical is uh 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 uh, uh these batteries. And see that what it attacks it attacks uh it, it's good with bacteria and it really furl with uh 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 the uh like the pneumonias and your flus. I ain't right. caught my flu yet, but but come to find out a lot of people haven't caught the flu yet. You know, but yeah. I'm waiting for. I, I'm just, I you know, I don't even, I don't even wait for it. I, um, I haven't been sick in years, so um, as far as no yeah. cold and things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I take my foot on the deli, ginseng, uh, you know, um, some Damiana, you know, right. I mean, some blood, you know, um, then you know that's chaparral and and um, myrrh and golden seal, you know, yeah. whatever it is, uh-huh. it's something that we uh-huh. helps with those. Um, that. Yes, a, a lot of that works for you. Uh, I'd like to share something. Uh, I had uh, went to see the doctor today, and I uh, haven't seen him since July. And he was treating me for diabetes and high cholesterol and uh, kidneys. But uh, I haven't. T- after I did not take any of the medicine that he prescribed for me. I just did a lot of herbs, uh, golden seal. Uh, Salt, tomato, uh, uh, a lot of herbs uh, that uh, Doctor Aileen had told me to take. And today he he couldn't hardly believe it. He was outdone. And he said that you got 100 uh, percent, you know, uh, a good report on your on your uh, on your, uh, lab test on lab work. You know, he asked me. He said he couldn't hardly believe it. You haven't been taking any of them. I said no, I haven't. You know, so he took me out. He did, did, did so. I'm not going to prescribe any more medicine for you then. You know, if you're doing it like that, you know, you know, without the medicine, and you still came out like that, you know, exactly. whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. You know, so, hey, hey, that's, that's, that's going to have to be. You know, that's the way we all going to have to end up. You know, um, getting to these um, particular levels where we can um, heal ourselves and keep ourselves healed because um, we see the industry is not. Um, working on our behalf. I mean, exactly. Too, right, too much GMO food, too much, um, you know, uh, fluoride water, too much chemtrails in the sky. They're trying to get us through the food, the air we breathe, and the water we drink. So, um, you know, the thing is, make sure that we um, growing our own food, make sure we purifying our own water, making it alkaline, and make sure that um, we're doing as much. Um, um, breathing, you know what I'm saying, inside the um, home um, and early in the mornings and um, as the evening, you know what I'm saying, begins with the sun. You know, um, those are the better ways. And then definitely on the clear nights, even though, um, you know, on cool nights, there's less prana in the air. Um, if the sky is clear, it doesn't matter. Make sure you still get your, um, you know, your breathing going in because that's what we notice. Um, they don't chemtrail at night specifically. You know what I'm saying? They only kill you during the damn day because their whole uh, mission, as um, even Al Gore said, the former vice president, that their whole thing is about blocking out the rays of the sun, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, get yours, you know, as they say. Um, let me go to the phone line. Um, thanks, Zach. I'm going to go to area code 803. Area code 803, you're on the line. Hey, peace and blessings, my brother. This Green Bay, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, peace, God. Peace. Hey, man, I agree with you, Brother Hill, and all other brothers and sisters who are listening in. Yeah, man, I'm just uh, calling in, my brother, just sharing in my knowledge, man, and 
kind of um, want to piggyback on what you said about the brother um, Prince, baby. Our beloved brother, man. May peace and blessings yeah. be upon him. You know, yeah. as well, my brother, is um, some of the false allegations and maybe different things of that sort, brother. I mean, I can, I can stand here, brother. I know we are many other brothers who stand in these nations, brother. And those who are the righteous, and we know, brother, that you, we know you're right in his act, brother. So any brother who's speaking anything, you know, towards you and any other me, my brother. You know, we let the universe and the spirit deal with those type of things, my brother. But you can um, right. best and very ensure that you have those on the righteous square, brother, that's always with you 360, through, through all the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Also, sure brother, I want, absolutely. Also, I want to piggy bank on uh, some of the things you spoke about, you know, dealing with the energy levels, um, for, you know, your cooling the energies, in the way they actually uh, move through the body. Um, I know we speak of the, we speak of certain planes of these energies. You know, there are various languages that's being spoken of. But, you know, we're speaking of the aspects of the magnetics. Uh, we know it's the high plane. You know, with your emphasis. Also, uh, earlier you spoke about the pine cone and different things of that sort. Um, right. Going back to some of the comedic teachings on down to some of the Romans on down to the European aspect that we might see today. <clears throat> Also speaking about the brain, <laughs> when we're speaking about the um, actually the beehive. Um, right. If we went into that depth of that, I know you would build more into that. I think other brothers and sisters may want to elaborate on, you know, you mm-hmm. elaborate on right. that aspect of things. Right. About well, the actual stigma. First, right. Well, we see the first connection with the beehive in ancient Kemet, um, in which that should be similar to the aspect of the ba. You know, um, which is the soul aspect itself, and um, the beehive was used in order to show um, the evolution, you know, of one soul, you know, um, by working together in unison, you know, as humanity, you know, and then also um, the appreciation of um, the life force principle and um, how you too can obtain um, higher levels of consciousness. And so the beehive symbolized that as well as the bee, which that was definitely an aspect of the soul. Absolutely. Okay, my brother. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I can see that quite clear. And that's also mm-hmm. where um, most symbolizes that third, am I correct, brother, is where is, um, when we deal with the aspect of the eye, some utilize refer, refer it to the serpent. When uh, we're dealing with the actual beast, some say in some mm-hmm. of the high teachings, I guess we go going to certain serpents, some say bees to exist. The mm-hmm. actual exists in the frequencies that we get through these planes. Right. You know, mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. speaking about things dealing with the aspects of um, these individuals tapping into some of these frequencies, you know, for the heart groups. Uh, we can go in various forms. We're not going to speak on that this time. Time to assume at this point. Um, what, 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 however, my brother, um, speaking of the bees, these Europeans, as well as those, whoever it may be, speak on the other side of the plane, our wickedness, they are actually trying to take those connections that we have you know, from the various of the bees and the way that you're speaking about the, the atmosphere. They know that connection is no different than the connection that we get uh, when we see the, the actual do or the actual uh, uh, frequency that may fall from the sky with the mist that comes on the earth. No different than the body need with the substance, speaking of things such as honey. You know, that's a, that's a major substance that we're talking about in the healing perspective of the body. <laughs> So, right. Well, by the way, we know the chat right now. Excuse me, but go ahead. Right. Well, we know that there's chemicals in which that is excreted from um, the area in the brain of the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, in which that um, is white, and which that is also golden, which it looks like honey. Um, mm. um, if you go back to the Old Testament, it's called the land of milk and honey. Uh, but that land is actually come out in the third ventricle of the brain with the activation of the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. Um, HGH um, happens to be golden in its look, you know, and then uh, melatonin melatonin is whitish in its look. So when mm-hmm. these two um, are activated, particularly during the time of, um, of I guess, of you say, us going through puberty, um, that is mm-hmm. hiding within our body in order to make us grow, to change um, the voice, to change the uh, facial uh, with the hair, change the structure as far as height, 
you know, um, you know, all of that is done based on um, those two particular plans of producing those chemicals, you know. Um, you know, so it's, it's also another, um, it's called chrysum, which that is produced from the pineal gland. Um, that actually is DMT or penolene, and which that also gives us a, a milkish um, golden color also. So um, this, this glands in which that produce these particular colors in our body in which that is symbolized um, by the bee um, based on that, you know, um, for, you know, for honey itself. So um, if the creatures in our brain look like honey, and then, of course, you know, um, the, it being excreted from the pineal gland where the soul is embedded at, and then, like we said, the bee um, symbolizes the soul. Um, so we see the connection there with um, with those two. Absolutely. I want to say one more thing, my brother. I'm going to let it be. I know it'll come a time you and I will be able to speak on the um, better note. Um, I want to elaborate real fast, my brother. Can you kind of like elaborate? on the aspects of the 12 chakras when it coincides with the actual zodiacs and the connection that we get from the heavens we on the earth. And I'll keep it peace from there, my brother. And um, L, y'all brother, much love and respect to you also. And I know I see you all the time again. Peace and blessing. I'll show you. All right. Appreciate you, Y. Um, Well, if we look at, you know, the 12 disciples or even the 12 children of Israel, we go to Genesis, the 49th chapter, um, we got, um, um, actually, Reuben, in which that actually is symbolic to Shu, um, which is the um, Aquarius um, and the water bearer, in which that um, it says Reuben is actually unstable in water, you know, and, um, you know, uh, that symbolizes actually um, what we would call the liver, the gallbladder, and the bladder um, area, which um, they, too, would begin to start functioning and giving us um, a 12 um um, chocolate systems. Um, then we have, of course, Simeon and Levi, in which that is in, um, about as um, sons of, of Yaku or Israel, which means to us in the God. Um, then then um, Simeon and Levi, that's the ruling set, uh, symbolic to the Gemini's, the twins of the zodiac, in which that um, the alignment of that you know, symbolizes the activation of the pituitary gland itself, and also it aids in the entire glandular system, you know. Um, then we have um, Judah or Judea or Yahuda, in which that um, is the lion, which is Atum, um, which is Asia or Sekhmat within the um, feminine aspect. Um, Judah is the lion that wept, you know, as we discussed in the course, the pineal gland is the home of the universal consciousness. That's what um, Judah symbolized the activation of the pineal gland. Um, all right, so uh, we have Zebulon, you know, which is Kepara or Pita, which is the dung beetle. Um, later on, becomes the crab or cancer, which that symbolizes the abdominal brain or the stomach and the digestive system, you know, of the body, you know. Um, and of course, we have um, Ishakar. Right, in which that um, symbolizes Taurus or Atis, which is um, head head rule, you know, um, or or saw, which is the form of ball, which that you know symbolizes uh, once again. Uh, we call it, it well within the Old Testament. I guess you could say in Genesis forty nine chapter, it would be called um, that Issachar is strong as an ass. Um, so it will actually symbolize the small of the back area, which is the abode of the sacral bone area, um, all right? And then uh, where the Kotalini energy um, actually dwells at. And, of course, you have Dan, in which that um, is the rack, you know, which is the scorpion, um, in which that symbolizes the genitalia, you know, or the root of base chakra, you know. Um, then we have Gad, you know, which um, is actually our men or Aries, you know, the ram, the lamb. You know, which that symbolizes the head area, you know, um, you know, and you know, what we call the first eye or third eye area. Um, then we have that share, you know, which is um Mayat or Libra, the scales, in which that um is the defense system, which is your immune system, you know, in particular the thyroid and parathyroid glands. You have Nefertelli, um, you know, which is 
um, Capricorn go to Mendez, you know, which symbolizes um, the elimination, um, urination, and defecation. So it symbolizes um, the relief of um, those, um, you know, fluids and waste from out the body. Mm -hmm. You have Joseph, which that symbolizes um, Gab or, you know, or Sagittarius, which is also a form of shoe, the archer, you know. Which that symbolizes um, basically your um, spinal column, you know. Then you have um, Benjamin, which that is the bat, which is um, Python, the fish, you know, which that actually um, Benjamin is said to be raven as a wolf, and which that symbolizes the philosophy of, um, you know, of um, actually of the right brain, you know what I'm saying, um, in that particular session. Also, um, the abode of when the sperm travels up the base of the spine and then have to come down the spine to reside within the um, prostate um, or testicles in order to be good for. Um, Benjamin also symbolizes that. And then, um, so those are the 12, you know, symbolic to the 12 tribes or the 12 vibes, which also represent the 12 strands of DNA. Um, medical science um, has established that we have two strands of DNA. The 10 strands of junk DNA has been understood to be um, strands in which that is now coped you know, um, or not active as they um, say it is. So, um, with the activation of more areas of the brain through the proper meditation, you begin to develop um, more chakras than just seven. If you go to Book of Revelation, first chapter, it says the Son of Man has seven stars in his right hand. But by the time you get to Revelation, the chapter, it says that um, that the woman who sat on the crown, she had 12 stars around her head. So it went from seven stars to 12 stars. So we understand that we are going from a seven chakra system to a nine to a twelve chakra system. Oh um, mm. right. Mm. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's deep, brother. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, much love. Hey man, I love you all, man. I see y'all in due time, man. One love. Peace, brothers. All right, peace. One love. All right, we got area code seven seven three. Area code seven seven three. You on the line? What's going on, Morris? Peace, 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 peace more. Uh, got two quick questions, uh, and you can go ahead and mute me back after I answer them. Um, first question is, uh, could you go in on the met- metaphysics of the Ark of the Covenant? And second question is, how does your pH level affect uh, your consciousness? So I know the brother was just talking about us being, you know, as like batteries, and you know the batteries right. well, contain yeah. acid. Right. So right. Could, you, could you break yeah. that down? Yeah. yeah, the pH level is seven point four um, pH, which means pH means power, um, hydrogen. So um, it depends on how powerful your hydrogen is. Hydrogen, of course, is water itself, H two O. Hydrogen, two part oxygen. You know, um, so uh, we understand that. So, of course, you know, when we're dealing with that, um, it must be alkaline, which is based on your blood and your plasma. Um, your blood and plasma is 7.4 pH balance. So that means the water that you drink must be that or a little bit higher in order to remove toxins, poisons, parasites, worms, bacteria, viruses from out of the bloodstream and out of your bodily system. If it is not, then that means that um, anything below 7.0 um, pH balance means that you have gone into an acidic state, all right? So that means you do not want to drink water that is acidic. You always want to make sure the water is at least 7.4. Um, now, what was the other question, the first question, because I asked the second one first. The uh, metaphysics uh, of the Ark of the Covenant. All right, so the Ark of the Covenant, as you see um, on um, what is the Ark of um uh, Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant or whatever movie that you might see, whether it's Charleston Heston uh, with the Ten Commandments. The Ark of the Covenant is actually talking about the brain itself. The Ark is the third ventricle. Inside of the head area itself is the two halves known as the two tablets in which that the Ten Commandments was written on, five each. 
which is five symbolic to the five senses, and it's five higher sensory perception perceptions. Um, for example, you have touch, which is the highest sense is psychemistry. Sight, the highest part of that is clairvoyance. Um, hearing is clairaudience. Taste is clairguessing. Um, smell is clairsentience. All right, so you have the higher aspects of those five senses, which is symbolic to the Ten Commandments, all right? Those two halves in which they show you um, which looks like, um, actually look like two areas in the brain because it actually is. They ask you the two cerebrums, as I may mention of earlier, which are parts of the brain in which that is extended to the cerebellum, in which that um, these two look just like those tablets or look like the two halves um, of the brain. Um, so uh, when we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant, we also found out that within the Ark of the Covenant you had the staff of Moses, which is actually the spinal column, all right? Um, then you also, um, it was also a charge, you know, battery in the sense that if you go back to Indiana Jones, anyone who didn't have pure thoughts or intentions, if they put um, the Ark of the Covenant from the outer gate, which is actually the lower extremity, you're talking about where the Kotalini energy is a bow at. Um, and then as you raise it to the holy place, which is the, um, the mid torso, the heart area, and then as you go into the holy of holies, that's when you really have to be real careful at with your thoughts because that's the place of purification, which actually is talking about your head, um, the king dome or the dome piece. So the Ark of the Covenant symbolizes actually um, the resurrection or the movement through the Mosaic Temple, which is actually the physical body, the same as Solomon's Temple, the same mm -hmm. as um, the Temple of Heru on the Giza Plateau called Edfu. Um, So all of that was made, if you get the book, The Temple in Man, or The Temple of Man by um, Swale um, Lubix, um, he states in there that these temples were designed after the human body. So they always had an outer gate, a holy place, and the Holy of Holies. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now I want to get back to the waters. One more quick question, and I'm gone. Uh, what you think about the the what's called a uh, effective? I think it's called Activa, something like that. I think it has like 9.5 um, pH. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, you talking about that kind of water? Right, Essentia. Um, Essentia yeah, water, essentia, which yeah. has 9.5. But there's even one that is um, called Power 10, in which that has 10 pH balance of water that is out, in which that um, um, for those in which that want to detoxify um, and yet keep the minerals in their body, because some people drink distilled water in which that leaches the uh, minerals from out the body. You don't want to stay on distilled water too long because it actually will begin to um, leach the minerals out of your um, your bone struggles, your teeth, you know, so forth so, so you want to make sure that you drink a water that is um, spring water, in which that has minerals and which that has put minerals back to your body. And those minerals, as the brother said, just like the granite, can become electrified. And so you want to make sure that you got water in which that is alkaline and which that is electrical, just like the okay, food. Now, uh, okay, now, okay. Now, what do you think about the, uh, the Fiji? Oh, Fiji... Um, does not have a good ORP level, which is the oxygen rate production. Um, it has a negative oxygen um, rate production, um, meaning that anything that is above um, 1, 2, 3, 400, um, in particular anything that's above 3 to 400 is good water with the ORP levels. That means the oxygen is in the water. Fuji has a high, quote, unquote, pH level, but it has a poor ORP level. Um, Essentia has um, about 300 in ORP level positively, and plus is 9.5 alkaline. So Essentia is the better water. Then you have Power 10, which is 10 um, as far as quote unquote, you know, pH level, but it is also 400 in higher. In um, is ORP, so that is excellent water as far as that is concerned. The water that has the highest um, oxygen level is the water that you would want to take along with the pH 
um, um, levels. And that's what okay. the thing in which that most people are missing in the water is the oxygen uh, rate production, the, um, the way that the oxygen is within the water. You want that. You want lots of oxygen in the water. Okay, now I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of reading, and it's uh, it's it's saying that like when you um, I guess when your pH level is like too high, it's kind of dangerous, mm-hmm. and when it's too low, it's kind of dangerous. So, what, right. what do you think about that's that? Why, that's, that's what and it's true. That's why I said it is times of when a person is going through some type of illness or sickness or doing some type of cleansing. So, for example, if a person is fasting, they need to drink more of alkaline water of higher percentage rate in order to eliminate those toxins and poisons from the body, um, those worms, those parasites, those bacteria, those viruses. Those have to be eliminated from the body, um, and the quickest way to do so is by um, the water content and, um, you know, and having that type of water, you know what I'm saying, to do so. Um, after it's over, then you can go back to the level of water, which is around 7.5, you know, um, you know, and that's where you will probably want to stay at until the next time was that you were trying to do a cleanse. Okay, okay. So so what do you think is better, the water on the shelf with a high pH or the uh, filters you can install yourself that's, that has the ionizing processes and uh, all of that? Well, the best water is... Um, Number one is well water um, or rain water from a TGM still uh, water, um, you know, which that is spring water. Um, as far as um, electrifying your water through machines that can be done, such as, you know, dealing with, uh, uh, what's the name of the um, product? Um, man, we actually um, had one. Uh, well, I can't remember the name of the old machine right now. Um, what's the name of the machine? I'm trying to think. Queen. What's the name of that machine? The water machine. Yeah, the, right. The Kanjin water machine or eyes um, and eyes. Um, people do do that, you know what I'm saying, and it can be done, but um, the consistency is still out on how um, well um, it really is. People, some people say that it did great things to them, and then other people say that it didn't do such great things to them. So um, I would think that it probably have to depends on the blood types, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and so you have to watch yourself and see how you do with it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, you know, um, if a, a person is O blood type, I don't know if they um, can do the best you know, with an isonizer, you know what I'm saying, ionizer. You know what I'm saying, or a catching water machine. So, you know, maybe some other blood types may, you know, might be all right with it, such as A blood type or whatever the case is. But um, I don't think that O blood types do too well. So, you know, there's something I wish that, you know, we have to check out and see uh, during our tests um, on that type of water and see how it works. I was a promoter of the catching water machine, um, you know, because it does, in a sense, uh, all certain people would be take small amounts of it, it increases your energetic body, you know, and so, um, but it is said that if, you know, some people may not have been drinking enough of it, um, you know, in one context, so claim that you're supposed to be drinking at least um, a gallon or more based on your weight, you know, um, right. for example, if you're, you know, 200 pounds, then you need to drink almost a gallon and a half or two gallons of, of, of tangent water a day. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot okay. of water. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it depends. You know what I'm saying? But if you, you know, but if you drink any water, which that is um, 7.5, you know what I'm saying, around there, and you drink it, you know, almost two gallons, you know what I'm saying, um, of course, you know, a lot of the waste material will be removed out, you know, out of the body. So, um we still have to go and do some more research on that in order to see exactly how um, that's done. We have the Catch and Water Machine on our website for those who want to do more research on www.cultural-freedom.com as well as also on our other website, www.drlemlbay.com. Um, we also have the um, water pitchers, the alkaline water pitchers, as well as also the um, alkaline water flasks or cups. You know what I'm saying? I wish that does the same thing as far as um, um, help with the oxygen 
uh, rate as well as also helping with the um, power hydrogen level in the water. Okay. Now, how long do those filters last with the pitchers? Um, the filters last yeah. like um, yeah. two um, months. Yeah. Two, two months, months, three months. Uh, uh, I, I change no, mine every lasts, two months. Right, but it lasts okay. a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, even, for, but a full, full effect, is, you get to change it by every right. two months, though. Uh, well, okay. It, right, at least once every six months, you know what I'm saying, if that's the case. But um, you can actually go up to almost two years. You know, oh, okay. But, uh, but based on what they say, they say at least once every year. Right. Okay. 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 So it, it, okay. it depends on how how much you use it, and um, you know, if a person is using it every single day, then yeah, I can probably recommend like once every six months. But if they're using mm-hmm. it, you know, uh, once or a couple times out the week, you know, then yeah, they probably can go up to about a year. You know, what I'm saying or you know, at least a little bit even longer. Okay. Okay. I usually okay. I usually change it every two months. You know, it, it you know. But uh, they, that's what they say. Uh, I, I use right. the Brita type, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, y'all be peaceful. All right. Peace. Yeah, peace, boy. Appreciate you. Boy. All right. All right. All right. Um, that's the last question for tonight. Um, we're getting ready to get up out of here, Brother L. You got any questions or anything that you want to build on and um, or end by saying? Appreciate you coming on tonight. Oh yes, yes, yes. I was uh, I'm late, but uh, I finally got on here. Uh, right, I we'll be on the show here tomorrow night too. You'll be on here tomorrow night too. Okay, okay, okay. Eight o'clock. Your time. Eight o'clock. Okay. So, um, so the panel gonna be I'll back. Be there. All right. All right. I was enjoying right. the show as I always. I, 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 I come in the middle. You, uh, you dropping science, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no doubt. All right, we get ready to hit up out of here, y'all. We appreciate y'all coming on. Cordis World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.